welcome to Alex Ribeiro and the Water Coaching. If you are planning to come over to Tulamben and improve your diving and shooting skills, this is a video that you must watch. Two thirds of underwater shooting are buoyancy. Doesn't matter what camera you have, which place you travel, if you don't have a good buoyancy, you will never get the image you want. You may ask, what about underwater macro? Well, if you don't have good buoyancy, you will have more backscatter to deal with. That is, if you don't destroy your subject. I strongly suggest that you start practicing buoyancy right now at the sea or in the swimming pool. Disclaimer. Though neutral buoyancy is always important underwater, the skills I will be talking to are not exactly the same as the ones in technical diving. If you are a technical diver, great! You already know most of what you need to know. However, trimming in here is not that much important. The most important thing is to get the shot. On many circumstances, your camera will not allow you to trim. That is okay. You are not showing your trimming skills. You are shooting. You'll be better using some sort of jet fin style fins because they are rigid, they work in every direction and that's specially important here. Unless you are in very specific circumstances like strong current, then you may even need free diving fins. So let's go back to your open water course. How was your fin pivot? Was it great? Remember to use your lungs to stay in position, doing slow, short breaths. Practice until you master it. That should be natural, without you even thinking about it. Now, if your fin pivot is good, then you practice hovering. Ideally, you should have your rig neutrally buoyant. Often, that is not possible. Maybe you are traveling with an acrylic dome and you cannot carry extra weight. Or maybe your strobes are too heavy, or maybe you just change strobes or arms or something. That was the case here, and that is why you should always clip your camera to you. Anyway, you should be able to keep you and your camera where you want them to be, and that comes down to finning technique. Fortunately, most dive instructors teach frog kicking in open water courses. Some just teach fluter kicks, and some even none of the above. Let's start with fluter kicking. Remember, the kick is coming from your hips with the power transferred to your knee and ankle as your foot flexes out. You shouldn't use it that much, as it consumes more energy, it's harder to keep stable, and potentially raises back scatter if you swim near a sandy bottom. However, in certain moments, like gaining extra speed when you're fighting current, you may need it. Avoid using too much knees. This is not riding a bicycle. Then the frog kicks. The main thing here is that you flex your ankle so your fins work against each other. Squeezing the water in between so it has to flow backwards, forcing your body to move forward. You can use your whole legs or just your ankles and feet, depending on how much room you have to move. Reverse frog kick is absolutely mandatory. It prevents you from crashing into your subject, hitting your body, scratching your dome port, whatever. Notice that now the outer part of the fin is working. Ankles command the movement. The fin is inserted into the water with minimum drag, and then pulled, pointing outwards to generate the movement. If you need more power while swimming backwards, perhaps to film divers that are swimming towards you, then you may revert to this awkward kind of two-third backwards for kicking. The important here is that your fins don't show up on the footage, so you should be able to do it in a controlled way. Sharp turning is also important, and that's why you should be able to do it in the smallest amount of space possible. Try using only one fin while maintaining buoyancy. These are the main skills you will be training on your buoyancy course. Hope to see you soon in Tulamben for some great photo and video dives.